Hello, folks. Today I'm here to talk about provisioning operating systems using server automation. I'm going to start loading up the primary client interface for server automation. Now, server automation, as you know, is the automation platform of choice for lifecycle management of uh, servers in the enterprise from 100 to 100,000 servers. We have some of the largest install bases in the world of, of, of servers under management. Okay, so you use this, this tool as your primary access tool into the server automation environment and how you manage your servers. Today I'm focusing on provisioning of those servers. So there's a section in the devices specifically called um, provision servers. These are servers that in this particular case have already been left uh, booted into the DHCP pool, and they're available for uh, provisioning. So down here, I have the uh, the console from VMware ESX, showing that I have a small uh, WinP environment. Uh, embedded into the WinP environment is a uh, small agent from server automation that, upon loading, will make a will handshake with the core in some cryptographic intel and make itself available. So at this point, this box is ready to be provisioned, you know, to receive an operating system. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave that down here and uh, pick this guy up, and I'm going to run a build plan against it. Now, I, I can have a whole session, a whole video dedicated on how to build and find build plan. I'm just going to use this one for now, go on to the next step. Very few questions asked at this point. A build plan is, uh, you know, it's a, it's a wrapping of, of several steps, automation steps that you can use to um, provision an operating system against a either virtual or bare metal machine. And you'll see that it's now going to be running against it. Now, I mentioned that this is one of two ways of provisioning an operating system. Uh, the other way is to take advantage of the built-in virtualization integration against the vCenter of server automation. And once I, I configure it, I can do very interesting things like from right here, create a virtual machine. So this creates the VM instance for me, and I don't have to take the manual step of creating it ahead of time. So. I pick the ESXi server. I pick the shared pool. I'm going to assign a bunch of RAM, two CPUs. Pick the operating system, which of course, it, it just deals with creating the environment for that operating system, not really installing it. This is just ESX at this point. Um, add a disk. Of my 20 gigs, that's fine. I'll change it to thick. Next, I'm going to change the network. I'm going to put it on the same virtual network as the other virtual machines. I'm going to run the build plan concurrently. So I'll use the same build plan that I have. Oops. And I'm going to boot with the build image. That's fine. And I'm going to run this task right now. And I'll get an email if it fails or succeeds. Incidentally, this integration here with uh, ticket tracking, we can integrate against Remedy or other ticketing solutions in the marketplace so that uh, you, can be, you can use a ticketing system to request new server builds and you can populate them back with the result of the uh, creation of those servers. Okay, and I'm going to just start the job. So this is both creating the virtual machine and deploying the operating system in one step. Whereas uh, in this setup, I created the virtual machine ahead of time and then pushed the build plan against it. And as you can see from here, well, that one is running. And this one's already running 
the building in the background. You can see one of the setup running back there. So we had launched two OS provisioning jobs, one using the traditional approach of firing up a virtual machine in vCenter, placing in the HCP pool, grabbing a Pixie image, making it available to the server, and then pushing a build plan onto it, which is basically an operating system. And the second path, which was to uh, let server automation directly contact vCenter, instantiate a virtual machine, and then push a build plan onto it, out from within server automation. Either approach has the same end result. You end up with managed servers, uh, again, available for management for, by server automation. This is the, the result of the job for uh, the, the first path. And you can see, if you ever launch anything or do anything in server automation, all these jobs appear under jobs and sessions. So there is the job that I ran uh, with the date stamp and the steps that it took to complete. Right, so if I click there, I can see the different steps that are in the build plan and how they ran. And uh, if I go back to my managed devices, I now know that that server is not available for management. There it is. So that is, that is uh, again, it's, it's, it's an efficient way to create repeatable boxes in your network, in your, in your data center, so that you, you have consistent output. Every, every machine you build is built the same way, following your guidelines for passwords, for pathing, for domain authentication, and, and everything that your enterprise requires for building new servers in your data center. Uh, 